Jacob is Dom's brother. Your whole life, you pushed yourself to be faster than Dom. Smarter than Dom. Stronger than Dom. But could you kill him? Because I'm ready if you are. I'm so excited that we finally get to talk about this movie after such a long delay. Um, when you first got were approached for the role, was there any apprehension in joining such a huge franchise in such a key role? No apprehension at all. I, if anything, the uh, nervous, anxious excitement comes with delivery. And, and uh, you know, I, I, you, you hype a big match for the WWE, you, you want to be in that seat. You want to be in the, in, the, in the seat to get the crowd whipped up and, and everybody watch on Sunday. And then you just have to get to the point where you deliver. So the delivery involves you doing as much preparation work as you can and you being able to adapt and pivot when your boot's on the ground. And that's, that's why it wasn't any apprehension. Um, I've, I've been a fan of the, the mythology. I've, I've watched them all. I, when I got the job, I watched them all in a row, which is... You know, if, if anybody is a fan, I recommend you, you do that before you see F9 because it really is cool to see all the nuances and, and things that are addressed. But if you're a, just somebody who wants to get back to the freaking cinema, F9 is just an awesome experience. So no, yeah. um, no apprehension at all. Vin Diesel spoken a lot about when he first met with you, he kind of felt as though this Paul Walker was telling him to cast you as that, which must be an incredible thing uh, to hear. Did Vin tell you about that? What's your memory of that first meeting that to is, talk about this role? So, uh, you know, our, our reality is is through our perspective, and I only have these two lenses to see. Uh, being being empathetic to, to Vin's comments, that's incomprehensible, because mm -hmm. Paul, Paul Walker's uh, investment, certainly uh, in Fast and Franch uh, Fast, Fast Family and the franchise, and his impression he's left on folks, it's, you know, they work so hard to, to honor his legacy and his memory that that's, that's really incomprehensible to try to, to wrap your mind around. Mm. Um, but I, I have to believe that, that Vin wouldn't use those words and throw them away because of how he feels about Paul, Paul's family, Paul's body of work. Him, you know, I just don't feel that that's wasted. So at the same time, um, once again, it's, it, I, I, uh, I, I, it, it, he's he's crafting a he's cobbling a pretty big shoe to fill, um, but I also think it's maybe his way of saying like, hey, I know you're new to this 20 year ball of fire, but give it all you got and and we'll be the best most welcoming people that you've you've ever worked with. And man, he was absolutely right. That's what I was wondering um, because you're a fan of this. Series, you must have had some expectation as to how it would be when you were filming them and joining this franchise. But was there anything in particular that took you by surprise when you were making this film? The whole thing. The whole thing. I, uh, you know, it's weird and y there's no way to shut off your biases, right? So uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm in the entertainment industry. I, I haven't worked on anything with the resources that Fast has. And immediately you go to like the Tropic Thunder spoof. It's like, ah, oh, this is, this is going to be like that. Fast does have a tremendous amount at their, their disposal, but what they put into the movie is incredible. And every penny shows on that screen. Nothing is wasted. Nothing is done just because they can do it. Um, they get the best of everyone. They get the best of everything. And it is a family. I think that's what was most important. The crew have been working on a ton of these movies. Everybody's like, oh, great to see you again. The, the cast has been doing this for 20 years. It's just celebrated its 20th anniversary. It was astonishing to see a sense of camaraderie and a sense of dedication to like, no, we're, we're doing this to make the movie better. It wasn't, it, it, it wasn't what I thought it would be. <laughs> In, in, the, in the best of ways, in the most fulfilling of ways. Obviously, we get to delve into Dom and Jacob's backstory and you have like Finn Cole playing the younger Jacob. Did you talk to about creating the character together or were you not able to cross over during production? We No, no, uh, I, I met with Finn a bunch and they actually made sure that Finn, you know, saw me, which, which I, I don't want to say I was against, but when you see the movie, um, a character has to have an arc, they have to have a journey. And man, we can take this out of entertainment and we can talk human to human. If I'm the same human being I was last year, something's wrong. We always have to evolve, we always have to grow. 
you know, friends I know from 10 years ago, like, man, you've changed. There's a, there's a context to that. If it's like in a negative connotation, there's a lot more questions to ask, but we should all be growing and we should all be evolving every day. And the Jacob is no different. He <laughs> has to be different as a grown man, especially with his journey than he was as a, a, a curious, wide-eyed teenager. And Finn mastered a young Jacob. I'm so glad we didn't ha I didn't have time to corrupt him. Like he did beautiful. He really, he had a, he had a it, was, it was a big role and, a, and, a, and a, a lot of expectations on that. And he pretty much filmed Fast and Furious Zero. Like he filmed the, the, the prequel and did an amazing job. When you were filming this, no one actually knew who you were playing. Um, did you go to lengths on set to kind of hide that from like any potential outsiders that are looking at the production or were there anything like that? Yeah, the one definable was the cross. I wore the Toretto yeah. cross and that is absolutely a dead giveaway. So literally yeah. we had a, like the props master was regulated as the handler of the cross. And they were like, no, no, you can, you can just wear it. I'm like, nope. Every, after every take, take it off, hide it, give it to someone. Because the costumes are the costumes and you can be, it could be whatever you need it to be. But if there was ever a candid with me, like a coffee in my hand and the cross, that's a dead, dead giveaway. So that it's amazing that that one piece of jewelry has so much energy and gravity around it. But like, that was the one thing I would put on before we, they said roll. And as soon as they said cut, I would take off. And that's how we kind of kept everything under wraps. Wow, I never even thought about that cross and how it would show up. Um, you and Vin get to have a massive uh, crunching fight scene midway through this film. Um, just how was that to be in that situation as a Fast and Furious fan? And what was the kind of training that went behind that and the preparation for it? Dude, squaring off with Dom Toretto in Fast and the Furious <laughs> is like being put in the main event at WrestleMania. It's literally like that's what it is. Here is the the most identifiable identifiable character in the heartbeat of the franchise you're going toe to toe and you're a toretto this is brother to brother and it wasn't so much training because i feel confident in what i can do and i also feel okay in saying i can't do something if they ask for something it was much more like hey this isn't a display of each fighter's ability this is a brother fighting a brother and i got i got four of them and some of the most vicious fights have been with my brothers, where it's, we're not scoring on technique, we're, we're chalking up wins and losses, and that's it. So it really, we really wanted to convey that, and I really, when I watch the fight back, it is two haymaker throwing, hell bent, destroy everything around us just to get my hand raised. Like it's not, it's not beautiful, and it shouldn't be. It should be visceral, and it should have all of those years of, of built up anxiety and emotion to be let out, which, which I was really proud that we were able to do that. We get a lot of uh, Jacob and his backstory, but there's always a sense that there's more to tell with him. I imagine if you got the opportunity, you'd, be, you'd love to return to this character and flesh him out a bit more, I'm assuming. 100%, they wouldn't even have to ask if they just like, it, the first time it was like, do you want, yes, absolutely. So <laughs> any, I, I, will, I would love to be associated with this group of human beings that, that do exceptionally well in making product that the world wants to see, but mm. also, have such a great reputation for making the work itself enjoyable. These are jobs you want, man. This is, this is a good one. Just finally, you've got obviously Fast and Furious this year, you've got another big blockbuster in the Suicide Squad. But I was wondering if because of your wrestling background, did you face any challenges when you decided to make the switch over to acting? Because when I spoke to Dave Batista, it was like they never, they only saw him one way. They never saw the variety. Did you have anything like that? Uh, a good friend of mine has a saying that obstacles are opportunities. And I just think having a realistic sense of the landscape helps. Okay, I've had a successful career in WWE. That's great. But it's the same thing as like being on a successful sitcom for a run of 12, 15, 16 seasons. It's very difficult for someone to see you in a new light. So you have to take, or in, in my perspective, I took small chances. It's been you know, train wreck was like 2012. Uh, mm. So it's been almost 10 years of re-educating folks that, okay, there, there's a little bit of versatility there and maybe in the versatility there could be more opportunity. And keep in mind, train wreck was eight years before I filmed my first movie. 
and I did a whole bunch of really bad movies before then because I really wasn't dedicated to the craft. I wanted to be a WWE champion. So every moment on set, I wanted to be back in the ring. So one of the first things I took when I, when I had that perspective of like, how am I gonna get people to see different sides? Well, it's, it's, it's not gonna happen tomorrow. I'm gonna do it inch by inch. And when I'm on set, I have to be on set. I can't wish I was in Chicago for Monday Night Raw. And I can't wish I was in Los Angeles for Friday Night SmackDown. I have to be here and I have to let that go. And that combined with time under tension and just success and failure and failure and success, and like that mixed in has brought this to here where people are saying, hey man, I like what you do on screen rather than, hey, which is also cool, I, I still admire that, but it's, it's really, it's enjoyable. And I, I feel for, I feel for, I feel Dave's frustration because it's, it, he did really good in, in WWE. So yeah, people are gonna look at him for like, man, this is what you do well. But I, he's also a great actor. He's so skilled and he knows he's got that talent and he just wants to be able to show it, but it, it, just, it just takes time.